Hey you guys, it's Apostle Michelle Peterson. I am back and I am um, going to record a very um, important message that the Lord gave to me a few days ago and he wanted me to do it to um, record this video to share uh, this with his people and it's about unbelief and how unbelief, how important unbelief is and how, um, you know, um, this, this type of belief system um, is so dangerous because what it does it will stop you from entering into the kingdom of God so I want to share with you guys what the Lord actually told me and I'll share with you guys his words specifically and also how you can change it he gave me three things that um, you guys can do and I'm going to share with you how I actually apply those three things to my life so you can actually apply it to yours too um, later on so definitely stick to stick to the end with this video it's a very important video um, that will um, I mean, it's just very important, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, you guys, so today we're going to talk about unbelief, the unbelieving heart, and this is a message from the Lord, and um, this is basically what he, he was uh, revealing to me, like the enemy has so many different strategies, and the Lord actually said that the enemy has a strategy for everything everything the enemy has a strategy for it and his strategies work he has been using these same strategies against us from uh creation when adam and eve was here and his strategies worked okay it worked on them and it's still working on us if you look around in this earth you'll see a lot of the evil stuff the enemy's strategies is still working on us okay but um the lord has given me three things to share with you guys about unbelief and how you can overcome this um, he's sharing the strategy the way what the enemy actually does and how we can overcome it and how we can do three things um, uh, to make sure the enemy doesn't uh, control us in this area okay so I'll share with you what the Lord said the first thing he said about unbelief why is unbelief such a, a dangerous thing why is it so important uh, what the Lord said, he said, unbelief ruins their relationship with me. Unbelief ruins their relationship with me. And basically, when you have a person that um, is uh, has unbelief, they don't believe the Lord. It could be, um, you know, that it could be different situations. They may not believe God heals people these days. So they may not be able to receive healing. They may not believe that God um, delivers people today. Or they may not be able to receive d deliverance. They may not believe, um, you know, God speaks to people um, today. And so they may not be able to hear God's voice. It's a lot of things that unbelief um, will cause you uh, to not be able to receive things from God because of that. So the Lord says here, unbelief ruins their relationship with me. Think about it. If you have someone and you're always being honest with them, you're telling them the truth and it's like nothing you say, they don't believe anything that you say. It's like they feel like you're lying or something. They don't trust you. What kind of relationship can you have with the person that they don't believe anything that you say? It's not going to be a close relationship. I mean, after a while, you're going to feel uncomfortable around them because you know, you're a good person and you're trying to be honest about everything, but no matter what you do, they don't believe you. They don't trust you. You know, it's like the opposite. So the Lord says here also, unbelief ruins our relationship with him. You know, we don't believe him. We don't believe certain things about him. We don't believe his word. You know, that ruins the relationship with him. You can't have a relationship with God if you have unbelief towards God in your heart and I just want to say this that we've all had uh, situations in our lives where you know we don't a hundred percent believe God in those situations I mean when we look back we see situations you know where we have been stressed out about things wondering how are we gonna get this taken care of you know um, praying and praying and praying for our children you know trying to you know uh, make sure they're protected like we don't trust God to protect them already we have to pray for them in order for God to protect them you know, that's how we, we get that mindset. We don't believe that God is going to protect our kids, you know, already, you know, if we don't pray. You know, that's unbelief. That's unbelief, you know, believing that you have to do something for 
you know, God to take care of your kids, knowing that you already have a covenant with God. So that's in your covenant. Protection is in your covenant. It's a lot of things that's in your covenant that you have with the Lord that you don't even have to worry about. You don't have to focus on it. You don't have to think about it. It's automatically in your covenant and it's going to be taken care of. Whenever you start getting stressed out and worried, then, you know, you're not trusting that God is going to take care of those things for you. Even though you do have a covenant with him, you still don't trust that he's going to take care of it. So you feel like you have to go out and do it or you have to call somebody else and ask someone else to do it. You know, it's, it's a lot of things that kind of plays into that. And I'll share with you, share with you guys my situation, how um, just so you can kind of see how unbelief, you can go from unbelief and and start actually believing and trusting God. My situation, the word where the Lord grew me in unbelief. Uh, was my finances. Um, I When I was working, I was making pretty good money and um, I wanted to go full-time in ministry. I didn't want to work anymore. I wanted to go full-time in ministry. And so then at the time, you know, the Lord didn't allow me to go full-time in ministry. But when he did allow me to go full-time in ministry and he called me away from, you know, working and, and was like, okay, start a church. And so I was like excited. I didn't have any money to even start a church. But I was like, okay, let me go ahead and start looking. You know, if the Lord told me to start a church, he's going to provide the church and the money and everything. And so he did. But <laughs> after I got into the church and all of these bills, I mean, I had two separate uh, income, um, you know, like household uh, bills, you know, to pay. And I wasn't working that much at the time because I was going into ministry. Then I saw the pressure of not having steady income coming in and having all the bills weighed on me. But the thing that I was trying to hold on to was that God, you told me to start this church. This building is your building. So I have to trust you to take care of it. And it was like plenty of times, you know, um, it was just like panic you know, and, and worrying, like, where's this money going to come from? You know, the bills is like due tomorrow and I don't have any money. And so I had to really like month after month, this went on for like, I've been, um, I've had this church building for about four years now. So this has been going on me having to totally trust God to pay the bills. Cause I still don't work. Uh, I don't, everything I do for ministry, I don't do anything for money. I don't ask for money, so I have to 100% trust God to get the money to me somehow, and he does it every single month. But in the beginning, when I was in this situation of being in ministry full-time, it was hard for me to get my focus off the bills, not having the money. It was hard. It was like, a ch I mean, it was strong. I had to really, really fight it, you know, and month after month after year after year of dealing with it every month i noticed it was something that i noticed that whenever i blocked everything out all the fears all the stress all the worry the money came the bills got paid that month someone came through someone mailed me some money someone you know gave me money something happened the bills got paid every month so I started paying attention to that and I was like, each month when it came time to pay the bills and I didn't have the money, I was just like, you know what? Somehow God always provides this, provide the money. So why am I even worrying about this? I'm not going to focus on that. I'm not going to focus. So I would have to fight my mind to focus on that. God has been taking care of this. This is his church. You know, you know, he told me to do this, so he's going to take care of it. And so month after month, after year after year, I started getting used to him taking care of it. You know, I started getting used to him coming through every month. And it was like, okay, I'm not going to focus on that anymore. No, I don't have the money, but <laughs> the Lord has been providing the money, you know, all this time. I'm not going to focus on it anymore. So that is what you have to do. You have to look and say, the Lord has been taking care of me. No, I don't have any money right now, <laughs> but he's been taking care of me and it's been plenty of times where I don't have the money to pay it and he's been taking care of me and it's been somehow it's been working out. 
So, but I have to say with me, the only way I got to the place to trust God like that and to really believe him, I had to see him work in my life. I had to pay attention to when he was working, when he was taking care of me, when he was providing. I had to go back and pay attention to that. I had to look back, you know, months ago, you know, and I had to look back years ago and see that this was actually really taken care of. Because if I looked at my situation now and I paid attention to that, I don't have the money for the bills and I just focused on not having the money and the bills are due tomorrow and then I would not you know see what God did in the past okay and the cool thing about this is that David did this before David went to fight Goliath he went to the past he went and remember what God did for him in the past he remembered that God delivered him from the hand of the bear and the hand of the lion and he was like God was there for me then why wouldn't he be here for me now you know with this Philistine you know that's the way you have to Go back and remember God. Focus on God. See what God did for you in the past. See what he did for you yesterday. See what he did for you a year. If you got to go back a year, go back there. Hold on to that. Focus on that. Don't focus on what is in your face right now. Not having the money. The bill is tomorrow. Don't focus on that. That's what the enemy wants you to focus on. But focus on God. Focus on what he did before, you know, for you. Focus on that. Okay? So this is why the Lord wanted me to make this video to share with you guys how I actually do this, how I overcome unbelief whenever it comes and tries to get my focus off of God and onto the situation, how I deal with it. So I'm going to share with you guys. Okay, so the Lord says unbelief ruins our relationship with him. Okay, unbelief is not trusting God, you know, in your situation, in your everyday or even not even believe in God. Okay, the Lord also was saying some things to me because I asked him, I said, Lord, um, why, is, why does unbelief actually destroy our relationship with you? And this is what he said. He said, because your mind is not on me when you are not believing in me. Remember, I was telling you how David did it. David had to go back and remember what God did for him in the past. Okay, the Lord's saying here, the reason why unbelief destroys our relationship with him is because our mind is not on God. We're focusing on the money, not having the money for the bills, and we're focusing on the bill. That's what we're focusing on. Not on God and what he did all the months before that, how he paid those bills, you know, how everything was taken care of somehow. We don't focus on that. We focus on the problem, the situation, what we don't have and what may happen okay the Lord's saying here that is the reason why is it destroys our relationship with him because we're not focusing on him during those times we're focusing on the problem and because we're focusing on the problem it causes us not to believe God can do it it causes us to get stressed out and anxiety panic all that stuff comes on us and we're trying to figure out we're calling people trying to figure out how we're gonna get this taken care of trying to do everything ourselves instead of trusting and looking at God and trusting that he's going to do it. Because I'm telling you, you have to take your eye off what the problem is. You can't focus on that. When you focus on that, you're not focusing on God. You can't focus on 10 things at a time. You know, when you're zoomed in on that, you can't be zoomed in on God. When you're zoomed in on God, you can't be zoomed in on this. The problem okay so the Lord says uh, our minds is not on him when we're not believing in him so when the doubt comes in our mind isn't on God at that time because if our mind is focused on God doubt can't come in because we're so focused on God and what he did how awesome and great he is okay all right so then the Lord said unbelief comes when your mind is not on me amen the enemy uses your hearts to make you not believe in me. This is what the Lord is saying. So then the Lord gave me three things um, that the enemy does to our hearts uh, to basically control us. The enemy does three things to our heart to control us, and then we get into unbelief. All right. So the Lord said, these are the three things that the Lord said. The Lord said, the enemy causes your hearts 
to not focus on me. That's number one. We take the focus off of God and we put it on the problem, the money, and the bills. That's the first thing the enemy does. He takes, we're not focusing on God at the time. We're focused on this. So that's the first thing the enemy does to us. The second thing the enemy does, the Lord said, okay, then to not open our hearts to God. The second thing is the enemy causes us not to open our hearts to God. Okay, when we take our focus off of God, our heart closes to God. This is what the Lord told me. Um, he told me this a long time ago, and this is why I make sure my heart is always open to God. I'll get focused if I got to get into worship and just be focusing on the Lord like this. So my heart opens to him. You know, my heart opens. When you're focused on the Lord and you're worshiping him, your heart is open to him. Now think about this. Let's say if you have that crush or somebody like that, your husband, your wife, someone that you really, really love. You know, when you're thinking about them, you get all of these emotions and stuff going, you know. It's because your heart is open to them. Now, think about that person, that enemy, the person that every time you see them, they're attacking you, offending you. Think about it. When they come around, your heart is closed to them. You're not showing love. You're not all over them and doing all this stuff. Your heart is closed. You're not, you don't want to be around them. You know, you're not thinking about them. You don't want to focus on them. And so when you have that sweetheart, the person that you're thinking on all the time, you know, you wake up thinking about them, you go to sleep thinking about them. It's because your heart is open to them. Now, when we focus on the Lord and think about him all the time and we're spending time with him, even just talking to him, our heart opens to him. So this is what he says. The enemy will take our focus off of God. Then the enemy will close our heart to God because we're not thinking about God. We're so focused on this problem. Okay? So this is what the Lord said. That's, that's the two, the second thing the enemy uses. The first thing, we, he takes our focus off of God. Then he closes our heart to God. Then the Lord said the third thing he's, he does, he, he causes us not to believe in God. The Lord, this is what the Lord says. The enemy causes your hearts to not focus on me to not be open to me, and to not believe in me. That's the three things. Focus, closed hearts, then we don't believe. So that's how we get to unbelief. Those three things. Hey you guys, my battery died, I am back. Um, so I'm gonna share with you guys how to change it. Um, if you are struggling from uh, unbelief and you're finding it sometimes when you're in situations to totally trust God in those situations, I'm going to share with you what the Lord said basically. How do you change this? This is the whole purpose of me doing this video. The Lord wanted me to share with you guys how to change it. When you're in those situations, what do you do? What do you do when you're in those situations? How do you overcome the enemy so that you can actually trust God in every situation in your life, no matter what it is? I mean, it could be down to the place where you are about to, you know, be beheaded um, for Jesus. You know, you're about to be martyred, but you will be in that situation and still be able to trust God and not deny him. You know what I mean? Because no fear will be able to come in because you totally believe the Lord that you'll lay your life down for him. Okay, so here are the things. The first thing the Lord said, we have to focus on him. The enemy would try to get our focus shifted over here. But what we have to do, we can't focus on that problem. We have to shift it and focus on the Lord. Talk to him. Talk to him. You know, communicate with him. That's that's what I do. I talk to the Lord. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just focus on the Lord and, and start talking to him because he's there. You know, like the Lord Jesus. I look to the heavens and I'll just start talking to the Lord. Lord, I'm in this situation, um, you know, Lord, and I need the finances to take care of this bill. So, Father, I know you're going to take care of me. I trust that you're going to take care of me. You took care of me last month. The month before that, you know, you, you've been taking pretty good care of me. So I'm going to trust that you're going to do it this time too, you know. And and when you're talking to him, you know, you're focusing on him because when like if I'm talking to you, it's easy for me to focus on you if I'm talking to you, okay. Um, if I get distracted, I see something else, you know, and then that will distract me, take my attention to you from you. But if I'm talking to you, it's easy for me to focus on you. It's like I'm focused on you when I'm talking to you. So when you're talking to the Lord and you're just talking to him, it helps you to focus on him. That's what I do. And when I have stuff going wrong, I'll just start talking to the Lord and the Lord will tell me, relax, don't focus on that. You know, 
just relax focus on me and so I'll get calmed down I ask the Lord to uh, calm me down and I'll start focus on him number two the second thing he says open our hearts to him okay first thing focus on him second thing open open our hearts to him now the way our heart opens to God is when we focus on him like when you're worshiping and God is just getting all your attention and you're just totally focusing on the Lord and you're in love with him at that time you know he's the only one you're focusing on you're singing to him you know your heart opens to him then your heart opens to him and I like to say just think about a situation like when you're in love you know you're you have this crush you know this person that you're just thinking about you wake up thinking about them you go to sleep thinking about them you know this crush this person that you think about all the time it could be your husband it could be your wife you know and that person you know your heart is open to them your heart is open to them love is flowing through your heart is open to them and you're thinking about them all the time it's the same thing whenever you're thinking about the Lord and focusing on him your heart actually opens to him your heart opens to him okay so that's like when you're in worship and you're focusing on the Lord it's almost like nothing else matters all the problems that you have Whenever you get out of worship, you're not thinking about that stuff when you're worshiping God. When you're truly worshiping God, you're not focused on nothing. The cares of the world don't even mean anything during that time. That's why a lot of people, when they come to church and they come to church, they can have everything crumbling when they, when, you know, before they come into church. And then when they come into church and the ones that are seriously worshiping the Lord, it's like they forget about all their problems until they leave church. And now, you know, the problems are back on them again because they take them on themselves they don't totally leave it with the Lord and start focusing on the Lord and worshiping the Lord when they leave the church you know but you can focus on the Lord and open your heart up to the Lord you know when you're in your house or at your job you know you can you can do it everywhere you just have to focus on him and then when you focus on him your heart opens okay the most important part is keeping your heart open to God at all times okay the Lord told me that if our heart closes to him we cannot enter into his kingdom we cannot enter into his kingdom that's why the enemy tries to shift our focus and put it on everything but God you know a lot of times we focus on everything else every day more than we focus on the Lord we may focus on the Lord for five minutes and everything else that's going on in the day we focus on all that stuff more than God our heart is closed to God during the whole day you know our heart may open a little bit within that five minutes and then it's shut again and we're not thinking about God anymore that day the enemy knows that if our heart is close to the Lord we can't enter into the kingdom of God our heart has to stay open to God to enter into his kingdom you guys we can't close our heart to him that's very important we have to keep our hearts open to him we have to focus on him regardless on whatever you have going on take the Lord with you on your job focus on him talk to him while you're on your job you know you're doing your stuff hey Lord how you doing you know Lord what do you think about this just talking to him because just talking to him you're gonna be thinking about him you're gonna be focused on him then okay your heart will stay open to him if you're thinking about him during the day so think about him focus on him as much as possible during the day and another tip to keep your heart open to the Lord make sure you are relaxed okay when you are focusing on the Lord and talking to him and communicating with him you know make sure you're relaxed if you're in a situation and you're just totally ripped in fear okay and you're going for the Lord if you can't calm that fear down and get rid of that fear or anxiety or panic or stress you know before you go for the Lord ask the Lord to fill your mind with his peace so you can get calm down okay so you can get that fear can leave uh, that anxiety that worry everything can just totally calm down and you can have peace okay so you can go for the Lord and totally you know everything is gone you're not thinking about any of those problems so you can totally focus on him when you're not thinking about everything else but if you're having problems and you can't calm down that fast just ask the Lord I do this a lot you know if I'm you know if, if it's a situation something's going on and I want to get to the Lord I ask the Lord Heavenly Father fill my mind with your peace Father in Jesus name fill my mind with your peace and I'll ask him just ask him over and over and over again until you feel his peace consume your mind you'll know it you'll know it because all those crazy thoughts will be gone you're not focusing on you know the problem you're calm and then you can focus on the Lord and then when you do that you can tell your heart will open 
when you're focused on him and you're not thinking about the cares of the world and it's just all his attention. He gets all your focus at that time, nothing else. You will be able to tell your heart opens to him. You can feel it. You can feel it when your heart opens to him. Okay? Okay, so the third thing is believe in him. Once you're focused on him, you got God's peace in your mind and you're totally calm down. You're not thinking about that problem. Now you can talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I have this situation. But you know what? Lord, I know you're going to take care of it. I know you're going to take care of it. Then you're actually believing in him. The third one is believing in him. Focus on him. Open your heart to him. Then believe in him. When you believe in him, you're going to know that he's going to take care of you because you have a covenant with him. He's going to take care of you because, you know, he's going to provide for you. He's going to he's going to take care of everything. You don't have to be stressed out or be afraid about anything. Okay? That's when you believe in him. Okay? So the three things, focus on him, make sure you do this, write this stuff down, do this every single day or every time you are in a situation that the enemy will try to get you to not believe in God. Okay, but do this every day. Focus on the Lord as much as possible and keep your heart open to him. Like I said, he wanted me to do this to share with the people about their hearts being closed to him and how that's very important. We have to focus on him. We have to try to focus on him as much as possible during the day. Think about him. Talk to him during the day. You know, just like you would talk to me. Talk to him during the day. All right. So then I want to share, um, I do want to share some scriptures really, really fast. I just actually, my battery had went dead, so I had to charge it up for a while. So while I was charging it up, I was just like, oh, I still got to talk about this. So I went on Periscope and I did the video. But what I want to do, I want to share with you guys how, how um, serious unbelief is, okay? In Revelation 21, 8, it says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here in Revelation is saying people who are unbelieving, unbelieving people, fearful people, that's what we're talking about, trying to get that fear, that stress, that worry out. Fearful, if you are fearful, I mean, and unbelieving, these people are listed in the same category with murderers. And they're going to be in the lake of fire. The reason why unbelieving is not faith. That's not faith in God. We have a covenant with God. Now, I can see if you don't have a covenant with God, you're not a born again believer. Of course, you're going to be stressed out. You're going to be worried. You're going to be uh, uh, totally afraid of everything in your life because you don't have a covenant with God. But when you have a covenant with God, you enter into this covenant with God. God, there's promises. God promises to take care of you. He promises to protect you. So you don't have to be stressed out and worried. So being a believer, being a born again Christian, a child of God, and you are fearful and stressed out and worried about things, the cares of this world, you can't, you can't walk in that. You can't walk in fear and walk in love. There is no fear. When you have fear, there is no love and fear. You know, perfect love casts out fear. So you can't have fear and love. Okay, so perfect love casts out fear. We can't have fear and love. Love is God. Okay, so here in Revelations 21, 8, it says the fearful people and the unbel unbelieving people are going to be in the lake of fire with murderers. Okay. So we, we can't, we gotta, you know, we, we don't have a reason to be afraid, you guys. We don't have a reason to be afraid. If we trust God, we have this covenant with him. He's promising all these cool things to us to take care of us, you know, but we're still afraid. You know, like that's just like if the military, if you had the whole military just surrounding you, surrounding your house, surrounding your land and all of that. You know, and they have their guns and you're still inside the house shaking and trembling with fear. And the whole military is around your house protecting you. And you're still afraid. But I'll say this. Unbelief is very, very dangerous to even flirt with. You know, whenever you're seeing, you're feeling that, you know, you're stressed out because the bills is happening and you don't have money like in my situation. You got to fight that thing. You got to say, okay, Lord, whatever you got to do. 
You know, you may be afraid or trembling for a little bit, but you got to get that off of you and you got to move back over here and trust the Lord with that situation and totally give it to him. Don't focus on it anymore. Go worship him. You got to do it. The children of Israel, they were the original branches. You know, uh, the Messiah was coming for them and they were the original branches. We Gentiles, the Gentiles, we were grafted in. Okay. The Bible talks about the original branches were broken off. The Jewish people. The reason why they were broken off was because of unbelief. Unbelief. When the Lord Jesus came, they didn't believe in Him. They didn't. They were. Uh, they were walking in unbelief so intense that it talks about the Lord Jesus couldn't even do any miracles or anything in His own hometown because of their unbelief. That's how strong it was. It totally stopped the hand of God. God couldn't even do anything in their life because of unbelief. So if you and me, if we are walking in unbelief and we're stressed out and we're worried and we're in situations and we're just wrapped in fear, even though God may want to help us because he loves us, he can't because of our unbelief. We don't believe him. We're stressed out. We don't trust that he's going to do it. So we're calling, trying to get everybody else to do it, trying to, you know, get the money up and trying to, you know, get it on our own because we don't trust God to take care of it. The original branches were broken off because of unbelief. The Gentiles grafted in. So if Gentiles are walking in unbelief, you know, we get broken off too, you guys. We don't just stay on there because, oh, you know, um, if the original branches were broken off, the engrafted branches is going to be broken off too if we're walking in unbelief. What actually puts us in and grafts us in is faith in God, trust in God, believing in God. That's what connects us to God. If we don't have that and the fear and all of that other stuff, that breaks us off. Okay? So we got to make sure we overcome this and we stay grafted in. Staying grafted in is believing in God, trusting Him for your situation, keeping your heart open to Him. Don't let your heart be closed to God. Your heart closes when you take your focus off of God and you put it on the problem. Your heart closes to God then because you're focused on this problem more than you're focused on God. So your heart shuts to Him. Okay? So we want to make sure we keep our heart open to him. The only way we keep our heart open to him is focus on him as much as possible during the day. Okay? Try to spend as much time focusing on him, talking to him during the day. Your heart will stay open to him. Then you'll start believing in him because you're communicating with him all the time. You're thinking about him all the time. You'll be able to believe. When bad things happen, you'll be able to believe, you know, because you're spending a lot of time communicating with the Lord. All right, you guys, I just want to share this last part that the Lord actually said. This is what he said. He said, I want them to know that I love them. I want them to trust me with their lives. That's what we're talking about now. Trusting God with our lives. That's every part of your life. Detail, little small little things. Things you may not even think the Lord, you know, is thinking about or cares about. Those little small things, you guys, he wants us to even trust him with those little tiny little things. And we can trust them. You know, who else? I mean, if you can't trust anybody else in this world, if you can't believe in nobody else in this world, you know, we can trust God, right? I mean, he's the only one that we can trust. If we can't trust nobody else, we can trust him out of everyone. He's the one we can trust. He says, I want them to trust me with their lives. Okay. He said, I want them to believe in me. And I was sharing in the Periscope video that the uh, the movie I saw, uh, Gabrielle Douglas, right after she won the uh, Olympics, um, she had the coach, one of her coaches, the first coach, he didn't really believe in her. He didn't really believe in her. But then when she uh, got the Asian coach, one of the things she said to him, you know, I just need you to believe in me. I just need you to believe in me. And he believed in her. He pushed her and look, I mean, she, she did great things. She won the Olympics. And, you know, we all want that. Uh, we all want people to believe in us, you guys. We want people to believe us and trust us. Trust our word, especially if we're honest. We want, we want people to believe that what we're saying is true. You know, we want that. Of course, God is going to want his own children to believe him and trust him. 
you know, and not to let the enemy come in and overtake us with fear. He doesn't want that. He wants us to trust him. The enemy shouldn't be able to come in and just say anything about our God, that God is not going to take care of us. The enemy shouldn't be able to do that to us. If we trust him, if our heart stays open to God, and if we're focusing on God, okay? Then the Lord says, the last thing he says is, I want them to love me. I want them to love me. You know, and all of this stuff that we're saying, focusing on God, thinking about him all the time, talking to him, our hearts being open to him, like that crush, you know, that crush that you think about all the time, opening your heart to God, like that crush that you think about all the time, thinking about God all the time, you know, like waking up thinking about him, getting in your car thinking about him, going to work thinking about him, on your job thinking about him, on your way back home thinking about him, you know, making dinner thinking about him, talking to him while you're making dinner, you know, spending a mu as much time as possible thinking about him and focusing on him like you would that crush. That crush, that's the one your heart is open to, okay? Not the person that attacks you when you go to work and they're slanting your name. Your heart is not open to them, which we need to practice on, making sure we love them too. But normally you close your heart off to that person. You stay away from them. But we don't want to do that with God. We want to be in his face all the time like that crush. You know, we want to always be in his face. We want to always be thinking about him, staying on the phone late at night with him, waking up in the morning wanting to talk to that crush. Same thing with God, you guys. That way our heart will stay open to him. Think of him as that crush, that crush that you have, that you had, that you have. Um, think about him like that, how you focus on that crush all the time and think about that crush all the time and talk to that crush all the time. All right, you guys. God wants us to love him, and that's loving him, focusing on him, keeping our heart to him, open to him, and believing in him. Those three things is how we show we love our God, and he wants us to love him and trust him. All right, you guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this very powerful message, very important. I'm telling you, unbelief will break us off. We won't have a relationship with God. It ruins our relationship with God. We cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven with unbelief. With our heart closed to God, we cannot enter into his kingdom if our heart is not open to God. So try to stay focused on him. All right. All right, you guys. God bless.